this is a down east style classic, but vacuum infused technology with Mercury V12 petrol engines on the back. So this thing will cruise along at a cruising speed of 35 to even 40 knots if you want. So high, high speed potential and a hell of a lot of fun, I gotta say. If you're interested in that, we have just filmed a test drive video. I'll leave a link to that at the end of this demonstration. My name's Dan Jones. You're watching Dan's Boat Life and we're in America. We're in America, This we're, we're, we're in Connecticut. It's a state. I'm still learning. I've been doing a lot of driving the last few days and you have a lot of states here, so I'm trying to get my head around it all, but it's a beautiful place. We're on the river here. We have just done a drive. So if you're interested in that, uh, keep watching and I'll link to that at the end of the video. But Back Cove is the boat. Back Cove 390 is the model. And um, they're built up in Maine, which is probably the home of beautiful classics. I spent a couple of days there traveling around now. And the style that I get um, or that I observe cruising around there, it's really, really nice. Think Palm Beach motor yachts in Sydney, uh, Palm Beach, the destination and the eastern suburbs of Sydney. It's a little bit of that vibe to another level is the best way I can describe it. So that's kind of what we're on here, but this is completely unique in terms of this offering because yes, so many of these boats are gonna have this style, but they're gonna be powered by shaft drives or IPS pod drives. So when we make them with a couple of stonking great big V12s, um, all of you guys, who've probably watched my other videos on high performance outboard powered boats with less protection, and let's face it, a different style, you're probably gonna see some value in something like this as your next boat uh, in your boat life journey, because when the kids wanna come along, when you wanna do the family thing, and when, let's face it, looks are important, this thing is probably a package that's gonna appeal. So. Um, very cool pieces of kit. You don't need to pull the thing out of the water to service them. You can actually just open this hatch up here and do an oil change and the gear leg as well can all be done from inside the water. You can see the mounting just here. It's all very solid and we're actually on flexi teak. So bring the camera around so you guys can have a look and we're actually on some flexi teak out the back here. That's not real teak. So from a maintenance perspective, that's good for us in our part of the world. Now, let's just focus on the entertainment side of things. So just, you guys go over there and look back at me, and I want you to get a real feel for what we're looking at, because the social spaces on these boats are really what it's all about. You sitting on this back lounge, as you cruise along in comfort, is the whole image that you get on a down east style boat. And they're certainly meeting that style with this design out the back here. We've got storage underneath these seats. You can put some shoes underneath us here and the table will open up like so. That provides grab handle and some drink holders just here. Beautiful big flagpole in the middle out the back. And the storage solutions underneath us here are amazing. I'm gonna to get to that later in the video. Kid and doggy door on both sides so you have access equally on port and starboard and we've also got sunshade so they will actually uh, some some carbon poles will bolt in here and then protect this whole area as well i'd say a shore shade is probably an option as well so that's up to you guys how you want to spec the boat just making my way over to starboard we got a hot and cold swim shower just here we got a deck wash just here and this is going to be first of the many conveniently located switches so if you're getting on the boat of an evening just flick this switch and it turns on some courtesy lights illuminating the decks so it makes everything very easy from an operational perspective check this out this is a shore power cable in america just for those of you watching outside of North America, our shore power, shore power cables are not that big. That just shocked me. I was amazed at how huge that is. Apparently that's something to do with the 110 volts. Anyone who's an electrician uh, who understands that, please explain in the comments. Um, drain just here, uh, shore power connection, town water connection as well. Then making our way forward, we've got the beautiful real teak here, drink holder, grab handles, and then gas meeting petrol, 2000, just a little over 2,000 litres is the capacity of the petrol tank. And then making our way forward 
on both starboard and port sides, it's equal. We'll do that later on in the video because I really want to show you what I think you're here to see because this is what really sets this boat apart from many other options that you're going to have. It's this accommodation. It's a beautiful space and it's all year round for, for us. Um, I know they winterize their boats uh, to the north of here, which is a different, whole different kettle of fish, which I'm still learning. A little bit of storage in there. But you have these windows that concertina across to the site, and you have this opening door, which gives you a beautiful big flow through space that we have here. And we have a few spaces to utilize. So I'll cover this one first, but it really is, um, we've got two cabins, we got this area up on deck and we have another little area downstairs. So think adults and kids or multiple groups. It's all possible on this boat. We'll focus on the galley first and then we'll make our way through. So this just looks all like, I'm assuming marble or maybe Corian, I'm not too sure. We've got a deep stainless steel sink here. That's a pull out tap, hot and cold. And I saw the hot water cylinder below. We'll check out later on. This is running off the Jenny. That's a Kenyan. And then we've got lots of working space with some down lights above us here and even a drop down TV. Look at that, that's handy. So that just folds up and out of the way when you don't wanna use it. Got the microwave here, set of drawers just here. We've got the bins for the recycling and the rubbish. That's smart, just there. And I saw in here, we've got the cutlery drawer. So you can put the barbie utensils there if you mount a barbie out the back and that's the cutlery drawer just there. And you need to pay attention, come down the side. They do all their own woodwork at Back Cove. So look at all the joints, it's all real timber and it's quite nice. You could put your pots and pans in this one because this is deeper, so that would work. And then in terms of refrigeration, we have a few options. So over here, we have one fridge, boom, boom. So that's underneath the seat. We have air conditioning under and ventilation over there. And then we have another fridge just here. So on deck, the refrigeration is as we see. One of those seats looks like the sort of seat you could chuck an Esky in there as well. We have this drawer here, which is a shallow drawer, but really good for instrument covers and other bits and pieces. So that just gets it out of the way. And then we've got this polished timber table here where really, if you're running at speed, this is gonna be a great place to be because your communication with a driver and navigator is really good. And your views over the water are fantastic. So just imagine, you know, if you are doing some long weekends, winter or summer, because it's an air conditioned, climate controlled, with a generator boat, you, you really are not having to stress so much about the elements because you can design the environment that you, you need to enjoy, uh, not the other way around. Got some Corian which matches the kitchen bench top just over here, got some drink holders and a grab handle there. And then in terms of this seat here, it's quite deep. The leather is high quality and it's very comfortable. So this would be a good place for a couple of people to eat a meal and four to six people to chill out just here. So we have the option for the similar number of people to sit out the back, then they can move in here if they're getting too cold or too hot. And then let's do the helm because there's, there's more space for you guys to relax and enjoy yourself or to send the little tackers if they're annoying you. So we've got movable um, helm chair and navigators. So it'll come forward and back. They're very high quality. I think these are just done by Back Cove, but the armrests will flick up and they will, they're adjustable. They'll go forward, they'll go back and they'll spin around by the looks of it. So you could, I think you can adjust this one into another direction if you want to face the guests and use that. But just focus, you guys have a look at the dash here and get a feel. There's quite a few things going on. Um, the first things I want to point out is the ventilation we have this middle window just let me just can you see that so when you are sure you could do this when you're running at sensible speeds in flat water but you could also pop that open when you're at rest and then combine with your two big sliding windows that go all the way back here same again 
on port. And then above me, we have these opening hatches, Lumai hatches just here. So just, just think about that. The natural ventilation that we can um, receive on this boat is fantastic. If you need to block out the sun, you can do just using these ocean air blinds, but we also have air conditioning. So it's very, very sensibly done. Grab handles in the middle if you're moving around in a seaway. But let's just get and finish this dash. It's a brand new boat, this one, so it doesn't have any instruments um, installed in it just yet, but we've got the timber finish with leather wrap around. It's quite stylishly done. And then the main part of the dash just here, we can rest mobile phones here and put them on charge with a two USB socket just on the port side. Grab handle, all your boat switches, including your horn. Here is your joystick for the motors. It also has an optional bow thruster. There's your zip wakes just here. This is your engine diagnostics. The throttles feel comfortable from a standing position. If you were sitting and driving for a long time, you might want to uh, use an autopilot, but it's perfectly good or just steer with your feet, so that's fine too. You can store mobile phones in this drawer as we are right now. Um, we've got a key start and your safety just here, Fireboy activation, and this clever design of a triple footrest, which kind of caters to everyone, people of all sizes, so that's sort of sensible. And then we have two drink holders in the middle so the skipper and navigator can reach them quite easily. And just if, if you have a look near the helm chair, we can also got your easy access to the battery. So there you can see it right there. So that's good and air conditioning just pointing or you know directing some air at your feet. But it's not over. So we saw the two fridges. We've also got, well I think it's a freezer because this floor pops up and check that out. I'm just gonna take the camera down with you. So we've got, I think that's a, one of those Vera Frigos. It could be a fridge or a freezer, I'm not exactly sure. But the volume, see you've got the hot water tank just there, some other systems and wiring loom and tank access. You can see my gear bag as well. So I just want you to imagine if you have left your boat outside your hometown and you've flown to the boat, well, what are you gonna do? You're gonna unpack your luggage and put it in the cabins, which we're about to see. That's a great place to stick the, the, your hard case luggage bags, if you have done that. And then you've got your, your other items that you maybe, you might've planned your meals for a couple of days that you're gonna spend on the boat. Um, maybe they're frozen steaks or something, I don't know. They, they could be in there. And then you've just got the food that you're using throughout the day in these fridges. So that's really clever and it's just lending the boat towards longer term usage and more serious usage. It's a step up perhaps to what you had available to you on, on your last boat. So now come down and check out this area. So this is where um, they call it the 390. It's 43 feet. It's got 39 feet or approximately on the water line but it's 43 feet overall. So they kind of understate themselves a little bit uh, back cove and their, their sister company Sabre does the same thing. It's a big boat, but this is a great place here to get down. Nobody can see you here. It's quite cozy. We have a flat screen TV just there. We've got some switches for the control panel, stereo, the Cummins Onan and some light switches just there. But it's a good place to kick back, watch TV and then, you know, just recline. But if you've got some kids, this is a great place for them to come and hang out. You've got shallow storage in here, so some cards and some other little games could go well, some books in there. I think I saw a little bit of storage underneath this seat here, which would be good for those extra foam life jackets that you've never got anywhere to store them. So that works in there. And then we've got the guests accommodation. So we're gonna go in here first. I'm just gonna try and cover all the bits and pieces first. Opening port lights with blinds, deck hatch that opens up as well with blinds and a small hanging locker. So this hanging locker is good for your little sports coats and your, your weather jackets just here. Nothing much longer than that. But the accommodation, see I'm, I'm almost standing up in here. You, you, you're not 
it doesn't feel like a crawl space. It's very luxurious. You could do this whole setup here. So we have big single bed, another single bed, air conditioning. We got water tankage underneath us here, storage underneath us here. We got matching Corian, which is same as in the galley uh, bedside table with a drawer underneath it, charging for phones on each side, reading lights, down lights, extra storage up here, 240 power just there, gas sniffer for safety, and then we have a privacy curtain uh, if you are having adult guests that want to stay for the night and close this area up. Also, look at the space underneath these stairs and the design of the stairs. Because we've got a stainless frame and we have the timber stairs themselves, when you look through, it gives you a feeling of extra space. So it's not closing this area off too much, but it also allows you to put a duffel bag in underneath the stairs where it's out of the way and convenient for guests. So if you don't wanna go, or if you don't have that hard luggage, you can actually just throw it in there. So that's, that's quite clever. So let's keep moving and we'll go straight to the master because it's very nice. They, a lot of timber on these boats as you would expect of this style and it creates quite a nice atmosphere. Isn't it beautiful? But this is quite nice on both sides. But in terms of this storage, we have a lot going on. Uh, before I get there, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. So remember how when we got on board, you had the switch to activate the light. As you get into each cabin, you have these switches on the roof, which are super easy to get to. So that's doing all the down lights. But imagine if you need to get up and go to the loo in the middle of the night, you don't want to really put that one on. So they have quite cleverly on each side of the bed, we've got this courtesy light switch. Can you see that from where you guys are? That switch just illuminates one small light, so or a couple of small lights, these ones on the floor, which point down. So you can see where you're going. You don't trip getting out of bed. You can go to the loo and you don't wake your partner up. It's quite considerate. It's just, you don't see those little things on every boat. So I like that. Um, we've got a little bit of storage on port and starboard with some uh, USB 12 volt charging for phones. You, you got the ledge where you can put them, obviously. We've got the reading light on either side, a small, that's not an escape hatch, but that's a ventilation hatch straight above the bed, which is gonna be pleasant if you don't want to do the AC. And then we have the proper escape hatch uh, in the middle of the cabin, just above the bed, just here. Um, but it doesn't end. We've got big drawer just here, good for blankets, then two more small drawers, which will be good for his and her. And then you can also unlock the bed and get top down access in here. And this will even pull up. So every, everything's accessible in this boat, but that's just probably some storage for some more blankets you could, or towels, you could fold them up, get them out of the way. So that's cool. Now we've got cupboards on either side. So you've got drawers on that side and then hanging locker on the port side, just there, flat screen TV and let's get underneath the floor and show you what's going on here. So that's straight into the bilge and you can see the tunnel thruster. So you get access to that if you needed to change the split pin and also maybe store a few things there in the bilge should you need. In terms of access to the loo, we have two options. So it's one toilet on this boat. So where you guys are, you come in through this door, but that door there is your private access for the master. So we've got the full stand up mirror. We come into the head like so, step onto some carpet, proper, proper loo. And then we've got these opening lockers there. So the loo roll holders on that one. You can do the toilet paper and all your other cleaning gear in there. Let's see what's underneath this one. Okay, that just moves, that's just, Attached, I don't exactly know why that moves because you can do your toiletries would go better in here, I think, because you've got 240 power, sorry, 110, I'm in America, uh, for your shavers and your hair dryers and all that sort of stuff. Let's see what's behind the loo. Oh, lots of storage there. That's another good place for some extras. And we've got opening port here, deck hatch just there, 
And then you guys come around to this door here and let's have a look at the day head access. So this door would be the day head access and in here is the stand up shower, which is a proper stand up shower. So that's really good. We have a shower head that goes up and down and then we've got an opening port here for the steam. So one, two, three in this head compartment. I've got some hooks. I've got a towel rack just here. You're really, you're not struggling at all. This is what you'd expect on a, on a large boat. So let's just look under the floor here. So we can see grey water, sump, and mid bilge just there. Good access to see the construction of the hull as well. It's all vacuum infusion on these boats. All the fiberglass parts. So that means they're pulling the resin through the structure and it's making it strong and light. It's the best way to do it. That looks like holding tank just in there. And I saw the water tank underneath the bed just there. So. Let's head on our way out. So hopefully you're getting an understanding of how capable this whole design is now from a livable perspective and a traveling perspective, but there is more. See these hinges here? This whole area, because we're not going for the diesel shaft drives um, that you would expect it to have on a boat like this, it's a massive storage lazarette. So I'm just gonna open up the easy quick access first. So this is how you get into the gen set. You've got more storage and a ginormous area. I'll just come down with me now to put tenders and toys down here, guys. So this is huge. You can see some more systems access, but tenders and toys are gonna go really well here. And the reason why I like this design is because we have these hinges forward, um, because remember when a lot of boat designers were um, basically whacking some outboards on the back of an inboard boat? Well, you could always tell because this hatch would hinge forward because no one really considered how they were gonna use the boat. This boat was designed for outboards. So this area here, the space that they've gained by not having an engine and shaft um, assembly is dedicated proper storage. And by opening this way, we have access directly to the ocean. So deploying toys, loading equipment and storing equipment is a lot easier. Let's go up the port side and we'll have a look. We can hear the air conditioning pumps. So um, traditional design, safe in terms of transiting forward and aft, because as soon as you come up those stairs there, you got something to grab onto. Nice amount of overhang in terms of the roof design. So just imagine the hot midday sun, that's gonna be giving you a little bit of protection from too much heat load on the glass. And also pay attention to the design of these decks here. So the gunnels, they've just gone up an inch and a half here. So when it's raining, that rain's gonna drain down the decks and go through that aft drain just there. It's not gonna go over the side of your boat and cause streaks down your beautiful gray hull in this instance. You can do other colors than gray because that's gel coat. It's not painted. The finish on these boats is, is really, really well done. The stainless looks really good. The welds appear to be quite smooth. And in terms of timber, because you do want a little bit of timber so it looks cool, this strip just here is actual teak. So that's all you have on this boat. So again, for the Southern Hemisphere viewers watching, thinking about our harsh sun, that's all you have to worry about because everything else is basically fiberglass. So not too much hassle just there. So we can see the window assembly, each one of them has a windscreen wiper. Uh, just there you go, you can see that. And now up here on the bow, we've got a finish in terms of the gray and the fiberglass. If you're walking around, this is a little bit slippery and this has got proper grip. So if you're walking, just pay attention to step here and not here if it's got the early morning dew and it's slippery, for example. Let's check out the anchor assembly. So I reckon you could store some uh, fenders in here. A couple of fenders be fine in there. Obviously we have other storage options down the back of the boat, single anchor, big roller, quick windlass. This area is dammed. We've got some drains there. So if the anchor comes up, 
dirty. It's going to sort of consolidate it all in this one area here. And then we've also got a deck wash down which we can plug in there and wash the anchor as well. It looks like we've got raw and fresh on this boat. And we've got up and down controls just here. And here's a cleat which can be utilized as well, including the forward cleats for tying up the boat. We'll make our way down the starboard side. Before we do, let's come and have a look at the roof. So, epic amount of space up here. And if you wanted to tie a few kayaks or the big foam matty things and deploy them, that is possible. But don't forget your aft lazarette is gonna hold a lot of those sorts of things. So, not a kayak, obviously a kayak's a bit too big, but the foam mat might work downstairs. So just think about that. Navigation lights, beautiful details along the side here. Stainless steel, that's in keeping with your traditional styling that you would have expected to see on a back cove of the past. Traditionally, that would have been engine ventilation. Now, I don't know what it does. Maybe it's just for looks. So who knows? So that's the boat, guys. I think we've covered it all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, sit back down on this comfortable seat. Um, yeah, it's not the traditional inboard shaft drive that many of you would expect of this style. We're going something completely different. But I, I honestly do think if, if you're used to a high powered, high performance outboard boat, um, your, your area of operations, your envelope is really expanded because you go everywhere at 35 knots, 40 knots, etc. So to try and wind those expectations back to a 20 knot or 25 knot cruise speed and top speed at 30 knots, it's a little bit of a downer for some of you. I know other of you watching are gonna go, that's crazy, but trust me, I've driven a lot of high performance, fast boats in the past, and you really do get used to what you can do with your day. You can do so many more things is the answer. And we're not really focusing on the super long range, um, all about fuel consumption. Let's go to Queensland from Sydney. Um, for those of you watching, you know, it's 300 plus nautical miles. It's probably more the short, sharp, fast trips of 20, 30 miles, uh, which you'll get there in, in, in half an hour uh, when you've got speed cap capabilities that you do on a boat like this. It's those trips and those people who are really gonna benefit from just having um, not too much time out at sea or transiting you know, on their inshore waterways and getting to their destinations quickly because let's face it, you probably don't have much time because you probably work a full-time job, whereas your granddad's already retired and he can cruise around at 20 knots, so it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, if that's you, if that's what's important to you, you really should pay attention to this Back Cove 390. It's unique for our market. There's a couple other brands doing something similar here in America, certainly not in Australia. Um, it's exceptional quality. It's great styling. It's the styling that many of you would be seeking being a down east boat. Um, and it, you've just got to try it. So if you want to try it, we've just done that. Like I said, I'll leave a link to on the screen right now or somewhere on the screen. Come with us. We're going to go for a burn here on the river in Connecticut. It's not my home water, so it's not gonna be like a normal test drive video, but I'm doing my best. I hope you enjoy it. Dan Jones is my name. You've been watching Dan's Boat Life. Thank you. See you on the next one.